Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how you can create this abstract loop in Blender. So let's get started. First touch of day and add a plane. Go to geometry nodes and click on new. Delete the group input and add a cube. And Alt shift click on it. Add a mesh to volume node and put that here. We also need a distribute points in volume node and set it to grid. I'm going to set the size of the cube to two. Add an instance on points node and duplicate the cube. Let's use it as the instance. Set the size to 0.28. Add a subdivision surface node and let's set that to 4. Put it here and duplicate it and put it here. Add a value node and plug the value into the edge crease and also into this one. If we change the value now, we have got something like this. Add a wave texture and plug the color into the scale. Let's also add a mask wave texture. Put that here and set it to 40. For this one, I'm going to set the W to minus 0.5. Press Ctrl Shift D and duplicate it. And here, let's set it to 0.5. Add a mix node. Put that here and plug the height into B. Set the factor to zero. Open the graph editor and let's keyframe the value. Make sure you're on frame one. Also keyframe the W, the W here and the factor. Go to frame 30. Make sure the value node is selected. Set it to one. Keyframe it again. Press F3 and type in make cyclic and select this. Now let's select the first keyframe and duplicate it. Bring it to frame 60 and make sure you only move it on the x-axis. Now if we press play, it's going to loop. In the timeline, let's set the end frame to 180. Go to frame 181 and let's set the W here to minus 0.5. Keyframe it. Set this one to 0.5. Keyframe it and the factor to 1 and keyframe it. Now if we press play, it's going to loop seamlessly. You can close this window now, add a set shade smooth node, add a joint geometry node, and take the mesh of this subdivision surface node here and plug it in here. Add a transform node and put that here. I'm going to set the scale to 1.44. Make sure that none of the cubes that we instanced are poking through the cube that we instanced them on. I recommend that you play the animation so that you can see if they are poking through at any point. You might have to disable the subdivision surface modifiers for that. Add a set material node and put that here and duplicate it. Go to the material properties and create two new materials. Select the first one here and the second one here. Now let's save and go to shading. You're going to have to use cycles for this. You can find a link to the HDRI that I'm using in the description. Make sure you have selected material 001. Delete the principal BSDF and add a glass BSDF. Control shift click on it. Now select the first material, delete the principal BSDF and again add a glass BSDF. Control shift click on it and let's give this one a slight blue color like this. Go to layout mode. By the way, I just noticed that we need to set the level here to 6. In layout mode, let's hit shift A and add a plane and move it down, scale it up and go into edit mode. Press 2 and select this edge here. Press E and Z and move it up. Go back into object mode, press Ctrl 3, go to the modifiers and set the render to 3. Now add a bevel modifier and move it above the subdivision surface modifier. I think I'm going to set the subdivisions to 5. With this plane selected, set the set rotation to 45. Now let's press R, Y and type in 40. Go into side view by pressing 3 and 8. Now hit Shift A and add a camera. Control or so to go into camera view and press G and set twice. I'm going to put it here. These are the coordinates. I think I'm going to change the rotation here. Select it again and press R and Y and type in minus 80. Go into rendered view and select this plane. Let's shade smooth. Go to the material properties, click on new and I'm going to give it a slight blue. With the camera selected, go to the object data properties and enable depth of field. Select the first plane and let's set the f-step to 0.3. Set the blades to 16. Go to compositing, enable use nodes and denoising data. Add a denoise node set to accurate. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to add a glare node. 
set it to high and to fog low. In the output properties, I'm going to set the file format to JPEG and the quality to 100%. Select an output folder. In the render properties, I'm going to set the max samples to 768. You can of course set them higher or lower. Go to color management. Set the fusions form to filmic and the look to very high contrast. Let's also go to performance and enable persistent data. As you can see, it says here that it will increase the memory usage, so just leave it disabled if you have to. And we can also go to render and enable lock interface. Save again and press Ctrl F12. Once it's done rendering, close this window and go to video editing. Go to the render properties. Go to color management and set the fusions form to standard and the look to none. In the output properties, set the file format to FFmpeg video, the encoding container to MPEG4 and the output quality to high quality. Make sure you're on frame 1, hit Shift A, image sequence, find the folder where you have the images, press A and enter, save again and press Ctrl F12. Please consider to like and subscribe. If you like this tutorial, then you're probably also going to like the render this on screen now. I'll see you next time.